Uh, we don't want to say it's coincidental to a chat we had yesterday with Scott Davis, the whistleblower at the Veterans Administration, who was telling us of problems that were persisting. This uh, legislation that they're talking about here was a $52 billion plan uh, called the uh, VA Choice and Community Care Act. It essentially would, among many, many other things, allow veterans who are facing long waits at VA hospitals to, to pick and choose a, a private hospital in the nearby uh, community and get to the front of the line, or at least the front of the booking process. Uh, this has been a problem because wait times, uh, with all the changes uh, and all the hoopla uh, back and forth, uh, it, we have not really seen much, much progress in that regard. And one of the things we got into with uh, Scott Davis on this whole issue was uh, whether those wait times had even improved marginally. He said collectively they have not, at crisis lines, that things got a little bit better. But by and large, with President Trump coming in and even with the much talked about promise, hope for new direction. It hadn't materialized. This is from Scott Davis yesterday. But you're saying with the exception of the so-called crisis hotline, um, you're mm -hmm. that you wait you, and you wait a long time still. Is that true? That is correct. As a matter of fact, The Hill did a report on this just in March that VA had been caught sending false reports about wait times. We know that veterans are still waiting on average longer for care. And this is something that the president talked about fixing when he was running for office. So you had said that whether the president realizes it or not, and I quote, things have gotten much worse since he took office. You took great care not to blame him. But what did mm -hmm. you mean? Well, I mean that even though he is now the new president, um, the people who run VA, uh, who were running it into the ground when he was campaigning, are still there. People like Dr. Carolyn Clancy, who was brought in to run VHA four years ago during the height of the scandal in 2014. So it's not just enough to change the president or bring in a new secretary. You have to get rid of the people causing the problem. Bottom line, that has not happened enough. There have been very few firings. In fact, uh, there have been very little administratively that has changed there. Uh, and so a lot of our bravest continue to wait. And doesn't this next guest know it? Uh, but he is here to tell about it and maybe some signs that for him at least uh, there is a potential for progress, the former Marine bomb technician, Johnny Joey Jones, uh, who experienced a lot of, by the way, what Scott Davis was outlining there. Johnny, very good to have you. Good afternoon, Neil. Um, tell me a little bit about your story and whether you are seeing any change. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, to roll it back in 2010, I lost my legs in Afghanistan, uh, recovered there and uh, found a way to work and try to help other veterans. 2011, I worked at the House Veterans Affairs Committee. So I've seen firsthand from the congressional oversight side uh, just how bad these problems are and how bad what I would consider to be a deep state version in the VA is because we have too many people in the VA right now who think that their job is to preserve their job and preserve the VA uh, and mo more importantly the funding there. Uh, so my personal experience just the other day and this is years in the making but kind of the straw that broke the camel's back if you will had a five and a half hour wait time at a local VA emergency room based on information provided to me by the VA three different on three different occasions that's where I needed to be to get a prescription filled then was told they couldn't fill it there anyway and turned away. Um, I've had the, the director of clinicians at that ER and the director of my local clinic reach out to me and both of them had the same consistent message I've heard over and over again. They're understaffed and the volume's too high. I heard the same thing when it took two years to get a housing grant that should have took six months. Uh, I heard the same thing from a processist who looked at me at a VA clinic and said you should go somewhere else. And I've heard the same thing from a VA uh, coordinator who told me they couldn't give me a wheelchair and I should go talk to a nonprofit to get one. So everywhere, if it's VHA, which is specifically health care, or VBA, which is the Benefits Administration, their excuse over and over again is that they're understaffed and under-resourced. Well, the problem is they're already overfunded for what they provide. So we throw money at this problem. It doesn't get better. There's only one other place to look, and that's administration and people and how these places are ran, and that's where the problem is. So, Johnny, when this, we had to do this five-plus-hour wait, when was that? This was last week, I think on May last 8th, week. Tuesday, May 8th. Yes. So, and, and let me be clear, you know, you're, uh, the reason why I mentioned you're a familiar face to a lot of people because you've been on Fox a yes. number of times. Your story is a, a very inspiring story. A lot of people are aware of you for do that. Did they, did they know you there? Not that that should make a difference, but I mean, you. you no, and, and 
Well, and that's what's funny about this. I've heard from Senator Isaacson, I've heard from Senator Purdue, multiple congressional representatives in my area, and multiple VA administrators. But when I was there that night at 3 o'clock in the morning, when I was told I couldn't be helped, and I decided to leave instead of wait what was going to be two more hours to be told no, I left my name and an email address. I handed it to the nurse in charge and said, listen, look me up. Send me an email if you guys would like to, to give me an explanation because you're going to hear about this because this isn't right. It's not right for me and it's not right for millions of veterans who don't get to go on Fox News and talk about uh, the problems in this country and possible fixes. So it isn't like I, I should have been treated well because of who I am or anything like that. I raised my right hand in service to this country. That's the only reason I should no, be treated well. No, I totally well, but agree, but it enough. does make you think, right, it's someone like you had to endure this. God knows what people who were not nearly so well known had to endure. If you had your then druthers, the, the type of person should head the VA, uh, what their background should be and what they should do first, what, what do you think? You know, for a long time, I thought it was someone who should ride the, chi the ship, and now I'm, I'm beginning to believe it's someone who's willing to scuttle it. And I think Jeff Miller's a great pick. Uh, Brian Mass is a good friend of mine. What I like about Jeff Miller is that when I worked for him on the House Veterans Affairs Committee, he wasn't afraid to raise issues that honestly were the right thing to do but didn't pander to either political side. Uh, whether it be reevaluating how veterans get these large disability checks but are able to work every day, or go over to the VA and say, why can you take billions of dollars and not provide hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of care? Um, there are fixes across the board, and I think it starts with reevaluating if the VA isn't just an antiquated system altogether, especially on the health administration side. I know that when I could use TRICARE and Medicare, I could go to a civilian doctor. He knew my name, my family's name, what I did for a living. He said, thank you for your service multiple times before I left, and I could call him and get seen 30 minutes later. Now, I've never had anything like that in any of the VAs across the country I've used, and that's a big start right there. It's amazing. Uh, Johnny, uh, I can't believe it, but, but in a way I can. Johnny Joey Jones, and as he pointed out, uh, it shouldn't be about whether you're known and from your appearances on Fox. It's just that you sworn allegiance to this country to protect this country and do everything for this country, as Johnny did, uh, with some big sacrifices there in the process. But to anyone, to have to endure what they're dealing with is beyond the pale.